Welcome. This is a May 8th Open ZFS production user call. We have Andrew, Dan, Stu, Jan, Philip, Steve, and myself, Michael, and some bits of news. Uh, I have a new M1 Mac Mini that is cutting the rendering time of these calls down from like, oh, at least 45 minutes for an hour of content down to under 10 minutes. I'm very happy about that. Um, other news, and we can geek out on that. Uh, Stu received his dual actuator drives and hopes to have some news next week. And uh, let's go on a super soft topic here. The ball is in your court to drive the nature of the open ZFS user event. It could be a production user event. It could be an unconference. It could be something like extreme ZFS. It could be just nuts and bolts hands-on. I'd love to know what kind of content you would like to have and because i'm only like a 12 minute or less drive from the center i could bring some lab hardware jbods you name it and Stu, i don't know if you have hardware in vancouver but we could actually have like stuff to touch and potentially you know torture tests so any thoughts there well that we'll need to have some case studies of hey this is this is what i learned this is what you know Dear God, don't do this again. Ah, amen. I like that. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry if I can tell you. The, the last event at the user thing, other than obviously ma consuming mass quantities, would be what do we want from the developers? What do we want? What feature are we missing that would make our lives easier? And have, basically take that top five, 10 list to introduce into the next days for the development summit. Amen. And that is a perfect segue of users to developers and uh, unless we're like with pitchforks and all, but I, I doubt right. it would be. Right. We'll, we'll bring our torches. Uh, those are great examples. Uh, what are your feelings on unconference format where we just take a few minutes up front and just say, hey, put some topics on a board, we'll vote on them and dive into those, maybe for either part of the content or second day or something. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that's, I mean, you get part of it too is the people that are going to come are normally like us, you know, a little more reserved um, versus saying complete introverts, which can qualify as well, especially in large groups. Yep. Um, so something a little, little more structured, and then you know, release the chains if you know things are happening. And that does loosely follow the developer for, uh, summit structure, which is structure the first day and on hackathon the next. So, so there's definitely that. Um, okay. That said, what about hands on? Uh, any unique desire to touch, I don't know, dual actuator drives and other things that you might not find at your local Best Buy. Yeah, if it could be facilitated, I don't see why not. Okay. It's not like we have a ton of power there. We have pretty good power. There's that. And oh, we're not, we're not going to bring in anything over 45 drives, so it won't be, we won't need 220. Correct. Although we could tap into the oven if we really had to but the fiber fairy came so there were legends of the audio guy from the 70s wanting like a conduit from the stage to a utility closet at the back of the stage and i discovered it this week after moving a whole bunch of stuff so my facility suddenly has like hopefully oh i don't know four grand worth of trenching that is ready to go with nothing in it. No one thought to put in a pull line, but that's fine. And we'll do either the ping pong bong or ping pong ball or something, but I am so happy about that. Makes my life easier to get fiber in there. So yay, there's that. Um, Related, do we feel there's a need for super basic introductory topics that would reach the widest possible audience? The problem with, with those kind of topics is that the people who need that are usually not the people who show up to that kind of event. Okay, fair point. But it's something that, you know, we could offer as, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one session with somebody with scar tissue. <laughs> fair. 
I mean, it's also it, it is also the kind of thing that you can put up on YouTube. But yeah. I'm just not I'm just not sure how many takers to 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 go and and sit in the audience for kind of talk like that would be. Understood. Although I did have a bit of a, a sit on your high horse epiphany this week. There, it, whenever one is advocating for, say, I don't know, I know there's people, folks here, but like Linux versus BSD and others, it's like, okay, are you using ZFS when you say that? Because I mean, a lot of <laughs> there's a gap in my observation if you're say not using ZFS with another operating system. That, that you y'all wouldn't be here if you strongly disagreed with that notion. <laughs> So um, I'll just actually, I'll, I'll, with that in my mind, open ZFS everywhere. And I have kind of given some talks related to that. So I'll, I'll think about yeah. what that means because I was first to use it on Windows on, on real hardware. I've done some moderately crazy stuff. And maybe that's also a reason to have maybe a back table of things to poke at and machines to throw your OS of choice at. I mean, the ZFS everywhere thing, I think, is interesting. I mean, I won't be able to be there, but... This should be streamed, and there will be very much, based on last year's experiences, a focus on getting meaningful streaming for, say, meaningful participation in the hackathon remotely, as opposed to, I don't to know, be... getting a report and a few Slack messages. Just, Go ahead. <laughs> just a crazy idea for how portable can you be? Um... Has anyone looked into combining user space ZFS with a user space NFS server? So that you can have a local NFS service uh, for operating systems without uh, kernel modules or fuse. I've, I've done it. Even Windows I've, and Mac OS have usable, I've done it. Uh, NFS plans. I've done it on NFS running on top of ZFS. So. With user space ZFS on an OS that might not necessarily support it natively? No. Okay. Okay. Is that beyond what you're asking? Uh, yes. I'm asking because uh, both Windows and Mac OS, for different reasons, are problematic going forward. Uh, Windows, just because how, how dissimilar to any other Unix it is at the kernel level, and then Mac OS because Apple uh, is tightening down the control of the kernel modules. Good point. Ever yeah. more, and at some point it may be the less problematic way short of going through hypervisor. Interesting. I've actually kind of had this thought rolling in my head about mm -hmm. running it on a, uh, you know, making a version of ZFS to run on a microkernel, which by definition would be in user space or in oh, user mode. Good point. Uh, Why on a microkernel? Some of or on a even sometimes you have privileged contacts there or the equivalent of one where you're in control not of a full, memory control. Not a full microkernel. You don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, mock, but mock's really a hybrid kernel. As in, you have access to all the things you normally do. Uh, you have access to low-level memory control and scheduling, even if it's done via IPC. And you triggered trigger the off-topic alarm. Micro... What? You triggered the off-topic alarm, but yes, let's... Uh, it's uh, off-topic. If you've got true. cool links to existing microkernels on a live OSs, that's definitely worth exploring because, oh, don't throw anything at me. What would VFS on the herd kernel look like? <laughs> well, I have <laughs> opinions welcome. about the herd kernel, so I'm not interested in that, but I would be interested on in running it on like SCL4. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of it? CL4? S. Oh. Uh, Sierra Echo Lima 4. Oh, cool. Great. Anyway, uh, did someone? Oh, Daniel, welcome. Yes, uh, we were just talking uh, events, introverts, you name it. Um, <laughs> so, Daniel, we are exploring what would folks potentially like to see at a user-oriented event, possibly absolutely introductory user or production users uh, in advance of the OpenZFS Developer Summit. 
Uh, you can read the bullet points that have come up to date. They've been quite good. It's a facility where we could do hands-on things. And uh, war stories are certainly, have come up a few times, I'll say. So any thoughts, Daniel, if you're in a place to speak? Um, yeah, I, I, well, I love hands-on. I think that's, I think that's very doable in the world of, uh, in the world of VMs. Um, yeah, I, I think I, in my, in my talk, I might, I might redo this part, but I tried to sort of clumsily show, uh, good and evil that one can perform with, with CFS. And I, I just feel like, I feel like touching those things is so, uh, is so, is so important. Um, so yeah, I think a user focused event should, should definitely have here. Everybody gets a VM. Uh, oh, and how cool. Think, okay. And, and super easy to do with ZFS. <laughs> That's something in, in, in the ZFS world that, that you could, you could provide in a, in a way that, you know, you probably couldn't for <laughs> other kinds of cons. Um, I keep think, thinking a big, beefy FreeBSD server with a bunch of jails. Yeah. You get a VM and you get a VM. Yeah, absolutely. But I've got I've got a couple. Same. Yeah, I mean, I've got I've got a ton of. Me. Yeah, I've got a ton of standby servers with you know, uh, you know, 40, 40 or eighty uh, threads. Uh, I mean, people can do some damage to those. That said, <laughs> oh dear, challenge accepted. I hear. <laughs> um, so Stu's multi-actuator drives aside. Is there hardware you would love to just see available to you? Like uh, I did, I think picked up a ninety-four hundred LSI card for what it's worth. Maybe even the ninety-five hundred, such that is like here's the latest and greatest. Poke at it. Is there any wish list item you want to add to that list? Um, yeah, for, 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 for me, I like, I, I don't know, I would, I would love to, I would love to just see demos of the, of not, not necessarily particular shiny toys, because I don't know, I mean, I'd certainly like to see it, but I don't know how we would, how we would feel it, but I'd be, I'd be interested in, in experimentation with different, um, you know, special special drive types, and what what happens when you know when when they're in, when they're engaged, whether it's slog or special or 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 whatever. Because I think there's a lot of you know, like like I think there's a lot of L two arc mythology and stuff like that. So try to try to see what. Um, Ooh, that that would be fantastic. To be able to explore, just, just spin through. Hey, we're gonna go through and you know spend a couple hours of. Hey, we've got a normal workflow. Here's how stuff's working. All right, now we're gonna start monkeying with the arcs. Yeah, tune them and go back and forth and basically do all that stuff we want to do anyway, but do it all together. It's like, all right, here's our plan. Yep. We're gonna make these seventy three changes. Let's so, see what yep. happens. What I would like to see uh, for bigger pools is how does a big one or two or three big D raids with special location classes and S log uh, work together? Can you get basically a good hybrid pool with oh, yeah. no I, I've done... SLC for the uh, log, uh, maybe a really aggressive L2 arc or special location classes? What, uh, what works better? There's, do you want to have like metadata and small blocks on flash and big blocks here? Because we have discussed a lot of more or less usual workflows here, here in this talk. For example, uh, the, I have a big uh, video um, editing server where people are streaming but also seeking, uh, which sounds like something d should be able to handle from the URL point of view, as long as it does not block on the small blocks for metadata and uh, lookup and so on. 
I mean, that's amazing. I, I love that. I think just experimenting with a couple of those in meat space would just be really fun. And also we'd learn a ton so fast. I mean, we would never get to no, all we this won't. stuff. But a lot of won't. those benchmarks uh, take too long for such an event because you uh, have to right, calculate a, right. a pool with tens of terabytes of data, at least maybe hmm. even a hundred terabytes of data have to be moved and in some configuration in far from ideal set, uh, configurations. So what would be really valuable is to basically have a small group go through these exercises and report on those, give basically a report of what they discovered and then put it to the larger group and let people um, criticize their methodology mm. and poke holes into it. Nice. Love it. Or we could have that running in the background while yeah, totally. are spinning and you can see the monitoring go, ooh, that was cool. You know. Even, even strategizing on these projects together, we, even if the benchmarks are going to take too long, would still be, I think, incredibly valuable. So what I would like to play around with, but I don't have the lab equipment for, is uh, using CAM and ASYNCHRON as uh, logical um, units. So CAM Allure um, to um, build a really work around the non-clustered nature of ZFS by uh, providing dual path of the CAM layer, maybe the iSCSI so that you can basically split your ZFS into the block devices and the front end node. So that the front end node can quickly fail over because the one of the problems is I can live with having to replace hardware. I can't really live with having to either have a near perfect replica all the time or re cabling everything when the front end node dies. It's like sand on a budget, basically. Sand on a budget. I like it. Uh, I will start inventorying my hardware in tools, including a little script I just linked, which was intended for blasting out zpools in a scripted manner. It is by no means perfect. It is by no means zooming in. Maybe I hit the wrong window. There it goes eventually. Uh, that's in the dock. It's jumping all over the place. Uh, but okay, uh, what, did you, what was your turn on a SAN, like economy SAN or uh, yeah, with the, SAN on um... budget? <laughs> reasonable time to recovery on a budget basically because at some point data develops inertia love it uh i'm sure there's something to uh zfs send strategies because for example, Jan, I believe you pointed out that well, if you if you have IPv6, IPv6, and you can reach the remote host without going through, say, a second layer of SSH encryption, but you happen to be using WireGuard, that is going to perhaps accelerate things. And I'm in a situation where I could use it. Um, so yeah, there that's a whole can you of You will get better full code by using IPsec policies attached to the TCP socket and transport cool. mode. Got it. Um, Thank you. <laughs> but while that is easier to set up and just as secure. Cool. Okay. Uh, so uh, anyway, other uh, please start brainstorming. Maybe I'll create a dedicated doc for that. I can start inventorying hardware. I'm more than happy to free up some machines, be it kind of multi-core, be it an Epic, be it some 40 gig networking. I do not have 100, sorry. Anyway, uh, and do uh, think about sponsors. Pretty simple idea. Yes, yep. Um, at least in theory, of course, that holds for bike sharing. Is what would be basically good guidelines to build into Zpool create so that it by default refuses to create two insane pool layouts. So if you give it forty uh, drives but configure it as two four, uh, 20 way mirrors you probably uh, transposed your drive metrics in your script or something. Mm -hmm. So that it would, by default, without an extra flag, 
uh, refuse to create two stupid things like a swipe over tens of drives with no redundancy, uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, is that left to the user and the NAS and the GUI, or should it indeed have seat belts and hand holding in the underlying? Tool? At least, I think. If you're in a GUI, it should at least pop up a warning message. And yeah. Trunes finally do you does. After really mean years. to do this? I know yeah. it does, uh, but so far it's left to the front end, and maybe there should be an okay, some kind of agreement upon what's to out there things like, oh, I have these, uh, like, I have a, I don't know, I have a pool with uh, lots of mirrors, and now I add a, the first red Z, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's At least you can now remove, uh, yeah, this kind of, do you oh. really want to, want to pull this trigger, it's pointed at your toes? The classic is add versus attach. Like, oh, I just striped in a single drive to my, you know, big old array, and that's not what I meant. <laughs> uh, attach is kind of harmless because it only turns adds to a mirror or turns a single drive to a mirror. You can undo that. Right, but the add is the people add confuse is those problem. easily. Yes. Yeah, uh, I have made the add mistake before and had to mm -hmm. recreate pools because of it's it. It's required to make that mistake if you're using ZFS. That's one of the key rites of passage, buddy. <laughs> Fortunately, okay. it usually happened before I actually put data on it. Excellent. Usually, um, but oh. I could I could definitely see a um, a warning always coming up about that at the very least. Uh, Daniel, you mentioned VMs and such. Would any form of tutorials be helpful, or shall we just more leverage to this group where it's a pretty knowledgeable level of folks? But that whole adverse is attached to me screams tutorial. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, at least, at least, a, you know, at least a recipe for, for somebody like, I mean, ideally, it would be, I, I think it would be useful that it, it, it would have a VM, and then it would have, you know, a, a virtual, a virtual volume revealed to the VM, and mm -hmm. with a couple of them on slow storage and a couple of them on fast, so that you could uh, experiment with, you know, at least four I mean, preferably more, well, I don't know, with lots of people on it, maybe not, not too many, but, but yeah, have a couple on fast and a couple on slow so that you can, you can sort of tangibly feel what, what happens when you do uh, different, different things with different uh, pool layouts. Nice. Um, so that would be, that'd be a fun test. I, I have, I have like, uh, like, you know, VMs for, for stress testing my script sort of like that. Um, so yeah, so, so something something like that that everybody could have to like really see the Z pull create command and okay. and different different layouts. I mean of course we can do all that with files and stuff. It's just it's just yeah. fun to do it quote unquote for real where they look like NVMe devices or whatnot. I would love to see a file workload sharing fest insofar as well everyone has sort of their from the hip benchmark but what if we say hey these are kind of mutually agreed to and here's your kobayashi maru test etc and <laughs> on the same page uh, uh oh, i mean the problem with all benchmarks yeah, is fine. none of them matter that aside <laughs> i know but you gotta start somewhere and at least uh, it tells you what not to do in some regards of like oh Wow, stunningly bad performance is very educational. We're in anyway. Yeah, I have I have a million uh, RAM slots free on my server, and yet I'm trying to squeeze extra power out of this expensive SSD I just bought, or something like that. Like, I don't know. I think there there's some sort of general there's some general knowledge we could we can impart. Maybe not a benchmark per se, but just just with you know, best, best, basic best practices. Mm. Uh. Insofar as we find where best practices differ from a default setting, that's when we need to get developers involved because the default setting should always be sane. 
a good, lovely point there. I do not match the defaults. And whenever someone says, oh yeah, everyone does does this, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they Everyone shouldn't have to do whatever foo to, to get a sane system. I but, mean, a lot of times that kind of stuff is from you know, yield decision back when it mm -hmm. made sense and it's changed over time. Mm -hmm. But if we're finding that something has changed over time, we need to update the defaults to be better. Yep. Okay, anything else on that topic? Please start thinking about that for over the coming you know, weeks and months. It's not like we're under a deadline like some conferences up in Canada of all places. But yeah. Please uh, explore that because you've had some fantastic suggestions so far. Uh, we talked about NFS and user space and your dual actuator drives are coming. Yay. Uh, quick update on a bug I reported. Alexander Moten, who was on a recent call, and Mark Johnston, who is an amazing contributor to FreeBSD, are working on the bug. And Mark has posted an article on makefs-t, which... Uh, Daniel and company who mentioned education and VMs and all that, I think this might be a fantastic teaching tool because you can blast out a pool as an unprivileged user and maybe aim something unprivileged like QEMU at it. So Mark has a, a pretty nifty article here and he goes through his attempts on how to create this functionality. And if it, what it is is like net... BSD long ago came up with MakeFS, just blast out a file system to a disk image. Well, he's built in CFS support. So attempt number one, libz pool. Attempt number two, ZFS from scratch, following the specification. So that's an enlightening article that comes in perfect harmony with a bug such that he's motivated to get that working right to, get, to keep the article valid. So yay. Um, it's a neat thing he's doing. We can talk about that later, and I'll be talking about that a little in Canada, in Ottawa. So from the last meeting, we talked about the broadest notion of uh, VMs on ZFS and, you know, when the host is ZFS, or maybe the VM is only ZFS and the host is not. Someone pointed out in comments, at, I think in response to the recording, that uh, VirtualBox on Windows has the notion of enabling and disabling the host IO cache. Uh, oh, Andrew, are you a recovering VirtualBox user and does that ring a bell? Um, we've used VirtualBox. We still have a bit of it floating around. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent a lot of time trying to avoid it as much as possible. Amen. Does that feature ring a bell? And did you, do you recall like- Not offhand. No worries. That double buffering. Yeah. So simply the awareness there, uh, which gets back to the whole hands-on notion. Uh, so question, something to something to this at the event. Uh, it would actually be super helpful to loop back to that what shall we call that? The Open ZFS Production User Conference, Production User Summit, um, User Summit. It's coinciding with the Developer Summit, and I don't think they'll want to change that name. Uh, throw the out some geekified ZFS Summit. De geekified. Somewhat. Somewhat. Oh, and I'm not. And I'm not going. No. Oh, <laughs> what? Name. What event name? Ah, I can't tell. I think user summit sounds yeah pretty take good. That. Yeah, take production. Yeah, that sounds that's that's the most friendly. We're Open friendly. CFS users. That ain't bad. Yeah, because yeah. that's pretty direct. That yeah, and I, yeah, it is pro appropriate to coattail on this, but at the same time. If it were an unconference, I have nothing against calling it an unconference, et cetera, et cetera. Bar camp is always confusing, but there might be alcohol involved under very... Maybe uh, for those who need a bit of coddling and don't want to be called users, call it a 
Operator Summit. Ooh, not bad. Uh, that's that's the name I use internally for those who do what we do. It's a very old school term that I do like, but it does have pretty specific context where they don't think you're like a surgeon. You might feel yeah. like one, but <laughs> operators. I, uh, operator do not, operators do not have root access. Oh, uh, okay. That's, what about users? That's my, that's my definition. Interesting. <laughs> I had not heard that one. I like that. Do it, well, not... it's mainly mainly for media type of thing. You have oh, access okay. to exactly what you need to do. You are operating a function. Interesting. I like it. Uh, I it. So... Every, everyone has different definitions, and that's why there's lots of confusion. Do we like administrators? You don't have to. I'm just curious. It's kind of a sysadmin mm -hmm. thing. You can say super users. Super, super users. Super users. Super. ZFS for power users. Power users. There's one. Okay. Power is good too. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and, these are great examples. Um, I w will default <laughs> to users in my head, user summit, just because it's a simple one. But no, you're. these are very good ideas. So keep them coming. The user tent might be the big, the big tent. What'd you say, Jan? Big. Uh, Daniel, you said big tent. Jan, you. Have yeah, the, just user user summit sounds like the big tentiest. If that's if that's what big we're tentiest, for, which yes. I would be. Yeah, which I would be open to. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Uh, if there's something better, let me know or let the group know. I, have nothing I mean that to... that seems to be the widest tent to me, which sounds like the goal. Yep. Um, that gets back to the whole, well, do we have like, you know, tutorials for new users or do we have people doing large system D raid versus uh, raid Z with special metadata classes? So, uh, yeah, but still, those are <laughs> those are users who uh, have a certain level of of experience. And there's no reason to like totally sh paint ourselves into any one corner. So. I like it. I like it. And if you've got more to throw in, throw them in there. Uh, moving on. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, there we go. That was a follow-up question to that. Does it reduce double double buffering? Actually, I'll just throw double buffering on there as a, a, a phrase to inspire discussion. Uh, double buffering. And interpret as you like. Jan, you have about 20 things in chat and you had the simple question about the uh, jails and visible snapshots. What did you see change? In 13, you could do foo. In 14, you can't or something. Or vice versa. And did we lose you? No, you're muted. You're still muted, which maybe you've got a phone call. That's good. Let's see, looking at your chat. Um, I will leave it to one of you to try to grab some things from his chat as topics while he's covered a lot of ground. Bless your heart. La, 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 la. I will even throw on that list documentation because that's what came out of the Beehive Hackathon in Coimbra. It's like documentation. Uh, some of it says Oracle, which is in fact Sun and hasn't changed in a very, very long time. Philip, take care. See you. You have to take off. Jan, you're still muted. So Dan, you're uh, Dan. Yeah. Aaron, you're the one unmuted person. What? Any feedback, comments, thoughts? I'm going. I'm by just very discreet in what I say and do. That's all. That's um, nothing. No. Oh. Cool. Okay. I've just been sitting here updating hosts. Oh, Jan got uh, background noise, which is a perfectly legitimate reason to stay quieter. And Daniel B, you've got the best background noise in New York. I love it. I was talking to Patrick earlier. It's like, I love them sirens. It's like three at once. Very cool. I forgot ZFS mount snapshot one is needed in addition. Okay, so he's got a top. He's got a topic to explore there. Um. Andrew, anything new from the trenches? 
I mean, not really. I'm just doing actually right now while we're talking, yeah. doing okay. ZFS sends between Proxmox hosts. With or without um, Zelta? Without, I'm doing them. I'm just doing them manually okay. because they're just one time sends to copy disk images. Totally. Uh, Daniel B and I talked briefly earlier this week about well, what is what does the potential Zelta and Proxmox relationship look like? Because I will stand by my uh, position that Proxmox knows enough about ZFS to be dangerous, and they need all the help they can get, such that uh, disk replacement, I hope, hope arrived in the latest version, and things like replication to hear people doing like QCOW2 to, to this, to that, to their own thing. It's like, no, I'm, let ZFS... I mean, I'm, I'm most, since I'm mostly used to dealing with that on the command line, yeah. um... If I do a disk replace, I'm going to flip over the command line anyway. Cool. Um, and yeah. If, so to me, it looks exactly like the you know the, the ZFS command in Linux, which is maybe not exactly like, but very very close to what it is going to be on a Lumos. So, short of the soft links in slash dev slash disk by ID and other craziness, in my opinion. I said very close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't like the yeah, way there's. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, it gets slightly different uh, phrased error messages and stuff sometimes when I'm testing on OMOs. Oh, interesting. Just very slightly. Yeah. Like a colon will be in a place that I didn't parse for and stuff like that. It uh, reminds me to test. Um, I mean, it's, it's not a ZFS problem per se, but I really don't care for how they structure their their disk images. And uh, if I do get around to making a compatible system based on um, Beehive and Alumos to work with our front end stuff that we're going to be using, yep, um, it will be structured differently. Why are you on Proxmox now? Is that just historical? Um, I've got uh, we we're. we're moving our um, VDI stuff to it because we've got a um, we've got a tool that will run it, it will it'll work on a number of things but proxmox was really the easiest yeah was that the virtual plumbing or some cool name you brought up a few months ago? uh virtual cable yeah virtual, the virtual cable is a company um, UDS is the name of their product Um, so if it's been I'm, a while, what, what's your news on that product? It sounded pretty cool. It's working. I mean, <laughs> that, I with that. What, what, what else am I going to say for that? Uh, it's, it's, it seems to be working pretty well. Um, but it is pretty solidly open source. So nice. at least for most of it. Mm -hmm. So I do plan on writing plug in, you know, creating some kind of interface to handle all the ZFS and and uh, Beehive type stuff, nice. and then uh, creating, making the changes and then submitting it to them to be able to get us all, to, to get it all onto something more akin to what I want to be using. I smell a talk proposal right there. Yeah, not this year. Yeah, okay. Cool. What else? I'll give chat a quick little rundown here. Daniel, regarding the Zelta rotate design, because that's a feature that I don't I haven't fully wrapped my head around. Do you have anything to share there with like make sure your clones don't get out of sync and you don't go split brain or something? Yeah, there's two there's two sides to it. I finished I finished one side. So if the cool. if the target if the target diverges, it'll 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 rename and then use a use a cloned common snapshot to uh, to keep the divergent trees. So I have I have a picture in my conference talk that that describes what that looks like. 
And then the other side of it is detecting when there is a there's a rename and clone on the source side, uh, which I'm which I'm working on. It's uh, it's it adds it adds an extra it sort of adds an extra column to to, to the checking because I have to you know I have to now juggle two two sources one with the you know one with the um, dash lowercase i origin and one uh, with the uh, you know, with the latest, with the latest snapshot. Um, hang on, I'll show you my little thumb diagram. Uh, if I can find my presentation. You want to share your screen? Uh, I can just drop, it's just a tiny little, it's a tiny little char, uh, chart that I can drop in the doc. Cool. Yeah. Please do. Uh, Let's see, is the doc on my yeah, calendar? Landing yes. zone. Uh, and I can shoot it to chat. Okay, I see it. Oh, I made it too big. You can you can shrink that. No worries. Um, ah, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so one. the oh, so for the the color sided of us, the yellow, uh, the yellow lines. So source, source last, target, target last, match. So if the if if for some reason the um and then there's there's two situations where there's a uh where there's where the, where there's a rotate, you have to move move something to get get it out of the way. But then and so this that's when that's when the the target side rotate happens. But there's one where it has to detect that the source side rolled back. So typically when I do a rollback, and I think probably most of us on this call would, would do it the same way. When we roll back a source, we'll, we'll rename the source and then clone the, um, the, the, data set, the data set tree of snapshots that we want to roll back to. Would, would, we, would we all agree that that's usually how we do it? We don't clobber rollback? Or do we clobber rollback? Well, I know personally, way. I almost never use the actual rollback command. Yeah, exactly. Because I never, do not want yeah. to clobber it. Yeah, exactly. So we rename and then clone. We don't actually do a rollback, um, but it looks it looks like a rollback. So basically, what I need from a backup tool to to get this very very important case that happens, you know, not not frequently, hopefully, but sometimes. We need to detect that that you know the source is at an origin, which which is available in the metadata. It's it's definitely there. Hmm. It's just um, whether we want to crawl through the snapshots every single time we do a replication to check check for an origin, which doubles the list time. So there needs to be a special case where we're going to then check to see if there's an origin, and then check to see if there's a matching snapshot, not in the current data set, but in the origin. And then um, we can adjust the replication commands to pick that up. How handy wow. is it that you can just rename that sucker? Now, obviously, you have to rename it into a place where the, the ZFS sender also has permissions to, to see it. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to work. Um, but with a little bit of with a little bit of prep. Um, you can you don't have to adjust your backups when a rollback event occurs, which is so nice because that's like my life. My life is <laughs> going to update my backup scripts to tell it that oh, the, there's a new you know either I have to do a manual replication to get the um, to get the right origin or, or whatever. So you know I think there are some tools out there that do it already. Um, but Zelta almost does it and, or, it, you know, it, it does clunkily, not in a, not in a way that's ready for human consumption, but it will be by BSD can. Cool. And I think this is something, I think these are things that, that should go upstream. I think these, some of these, some of these concepts, like the idea of a relationship between two recursive trees of data sets, or at least the relationship between two data sets, um, should be should be something that ZFS can can report in in libzfs or, or in the utility itself. Uh, so that's that's going to be a big 
part of my talk is, you know, what, what cool things can we actually get into, get up there? Cause this, this I think is, is one of them. Cause I don't think it's, I don't think it's intuitive. I think a lot of people I talk to that have used ZFS for a long time, don't even know they can do this without, mm -hmm. without creating a whole new full data set. I mean, um, yeah, I think I asked a, I asked a number of people and I, I fell on, oh, well, you just take a new full replica after a, you know, after something like that happens. But that's not true. You can use a cloned origin on either side and it replicates successfully. So, mm. um, yeah, so that will be, it won't be full auto. I think you have to, you probably have to run it with like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe just even like Zelta backup dash origin or Zelta sync. Yeah, yeah, Zelta, whatever, Zelta, whatever backup command dash O origin. And you don't even have to specify the origin, it'll just detect it for you. But something like that, or just dash dash origin maybe. Hmm. Um, or dash dash rotate, and it'll just figure out which case you mean, which I think would be, that's probably the way I'll do it. Um, In, yeah, Jan's got a point there about uh, ZFS rollback dash R only sort of tolerating one recursive snapshot, not a bunch. That's interesting. ZFS, yeah. So a lot. So ZFS, yeah. So so that's that is one of the so two the, basically the two things that I think everybody writes into their into their ZFS replication tool is number one endpoint endpoint descriptions, right? Because you're 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 either using a, a socket or you're using SSH to get to other other systems. So dealing with a way to talk about endpoints. And then the second thing is that like clone and rollback and stuff like that don't don't operate recursively. So everybody has to do those two things. So if everybody has to do those two things, what, you know, that seems to me to be a time to put pressure on the upstream to start creating, a, um, you know, standards around these things. Uh, are you maintaining a list of these discoveries as you go? Because it sounds like you've... Yeah. That is called yes. That it's is called my cool BSD things. can talk. But yes, I will. I will definitely incorporate this into um, the Zelta wiki, which is pretty raw right now. Um, but but I think obviously in the in the official uh, BFS wiki at some point, I think that would be a good incubator. Sure. And I do hope I mean, you talk about your like listing performance because you found that some operations are like really fast and some are ridiculously slow and andrew is that yeah if you do that? yeah if you double you double the list time if you if you have to dig through the snapshots for any information except for guid name um transaction group and i think there's there there's one or two other fuzzy okay. things that i don't that i don't track but yeah you double the list times which can which can you know which can affect you know which can affect the backup job for sure yeah okay uh, hey, Andrew, sorry, uh, Andrew. I think you said something. Um, well, I was going to say, as far as um, snapshots being recursive, are because snapshots specifically, you're talking um, by making them recursive, you're talking about maintaining the same um, transaction group. Tra yeah, transaction group. Yeah. That shouldn't be an issue for rollbacks when, when you're talking about rollbacks and um, uh, clones. The, the, the transaction group isn't really going to change there. Um, so that's probably why so, it wasn't viewed as necessary, although it would definitely be a great convenience. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and also, like, things like VM Beehive exist, you know? There's, they're, they're, it is, you know, it might maybe just like having a, a, you know, a toolkit that's that's popular on the side is is the right way to go. I don't know. I don't. I, I definitely don't want to be the guy that there's, you know, four, 13 standards, and then I say I want a standardized thing, and I just make the 14th standard. Um, 
eventually I would like to, you know, find a, find a common language for, for this stuff, even if it, even if it isn't built into the vaults of CFS, there are things that people intuitively, I think all end up having to write in their own scripts. I think, have well, I think having a dash R for recursive for those certainly is a, is a very good idea for convenience and should be brought up to developers that that would be a good thing to pass on. Yeah, uh, I think it was well, irony think, is um, that I think we can already implement a user space uh, dash R for a lot of things by using channel programs. So you could do it uh, in just Z the ZFS command, for example, with a class of enumerate it all and then do the destroy or uh, snapshot that you yeah, can do this... with a channel program. Hmm. I mean, you know, like I said, your transact your or your your transaction ID does doesn't really matter for that either. So you could use a shell script, but ultimately the point is this is something that feels like ZFS should just be able to do it on its own without us having to jump through any major hoops other than adding a flag. Hmm. One irony that drives me crazy, and I know I've brought it up on this call multiple times, but there were the, that the Sun version or the Oracle version had a ZFS Sun dash lowercase r where you could specify which snapshot to, to recursively uh, to replicate from. Um, which, which you can, which does not, uh, you know, which doesn't work in in OpenZFS, and they're they're actually proposing a dash R that is something completely different. So, so that's that seems to be down the that seems to be down the toilet. That's never, well, it's not coming with a dash lowercase R anyway. Do we know why uh, they ditched that feature? It's a, I find it to be a very strange. Uh, well, I mean, it, I think it just didn't like from from the from the open source, uh, the CDL version just didn't happen. So that's the no. that's that's where they work All from. Right. And Jan so, was asking, is that dash capital R or lowercase R? Lowercase capital, yeah, capital will do properties and everything from the from oh, the beginning. Right. It will not right. start yeah, from okay. a specific. Yeah, it won't start from a specific place, which is the reason why ZX for doesn't. And that's yeah. that's one of the reasons why I quit ZX for about a month after starting to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, Jan, to answer your question in chat, uh, apparently CDDL version probably V twenty eight and even the V fifteen before that didn't have it. Go figure. Anyway, keep those lists coming because some of that's fascinating because. The aha moment of, oh, if I only list for a few specific things or switch over to uh, the GUIDs rather than the names and double my performance. And yet yeah, it's an, a system a human doesn't look at. So it's not very often they need to look at a GUID. Well, that's that's pretty significant. I will keep that slide in my BSD talk. Thank you. That's in there. Cool. Yeah, I just looked at uh, one of my OmniOS machines, and it does not have dash lowercase r. Hmm. At least not in the documentation. Hmm. Uh, I wonder if it used some third-party software they couldn't like open up or some nonsense. I don't know, but anyway, I mean, it could just it could just be that it was something that was added after Oracle bought them and stopped releasing things. Maybe. Okay, so, post fork. Cool. Anything else on what is now a sunny afternoon? And I see some more chat. Yep. Cool. Well, gang, uh, I don't know, Jan, if we can dive into your topics there, but do save them. I will save off the chat. So, Andrew, Dan, Dan, Jan, Steve, anything else on this fine afternoon or an evening for some? I am don't have anything. Cool. Well, then I will call it at 1937 UTC. Thank you, everyone.
like and subscribe. Boom. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Take care.